us with our call to worship. Jesus revealed his uniqueness in being fully human and divine when he was tempted. Please lift up your voices as you are able, for a mighty fortress is our God. Psalm 32, Romans 5, and 
verses 12 through 19, I will be sharing with you from the Gospel, Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Hear now the word of the Lord. Of course, Jesus was baptized, and upon the conclusion of his baptism, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted forty days and forty nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to them, All of these I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. May God add his richest blessings to the reading and the hearing of his holy, holy word. Please stand as you are able for, because he lives.
please be seated. And let us pray. Loving and gracious God, open now our eyes, our ears, our hearts, that your word may come, take root, and grow within our living. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our gospel lesson that is in front of us is a passage that is full of images. They are very vivid images, so vivid that we can almost see the image of, G of, of the scene of Jesus in conversation with the tempter. If we have lively in, uh, uh, imaginations, we might even be able to feel the heat of the desert, uh, that strange and, and maybe even visualize what we often depict as the devil with a long tail and two horns coming out of the head as has been seen in imagery of what the devil looks like and fortunately that's usually not the case it's always something much more beautiful much more tempting in the process but even without an imagination the scene comes to us seems a little bit odd for our scripture even though it is visual, it's still so surreal for us. We can certainly imagine Jesus going into the wilderness to pray and to contemplate. But what should we make of the devil tempting him to do magic or taking him to the pinnacle of the temple and then to a high mountain showing Jesus all of the kingdoms of the world? When the devil leaves Jesus, angels come and wait on him. Matthew even tells us that the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness so that he would be tempted by the devil. That doesn't quite seem fair. After all, whose side is the Spirit on anyway? And why tell us this story in the first place? And what does it have to do with us? Well, it's always helpful to look at a passage of Scripture and see where it appears in the Gospel lesson. In this case, Jesus has just been baptized by John. In Matthew's account, as we had just heard, John says prior to, to our lesson today, John says he should instead be baptized by Jesus. But Jesus responds, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. And then right after today's passage, Jesus will hear of John's arrest. And then it seems as if Jesus picks up where John leaves all. Now we hear Jesus proclaiming, and not John, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And thus, Jesus' ministry begins. His mission begins. Matthew's gospel isn't a diary of facts and figures. It's all about Jesus' mission and ministry for us and for the world. Who Jesus is and what Jesus teaches his followers about their own ministry and the kingdom of God. So this passage begins to give us a glimpse at the person of Jesus. Now remember, 
He's just been baptized, and he is now seriously considering his ministry by taking time out for prayer. Jesus understood that his baptism was a life-forming event. An event that would propel him into the world that would both celebrate his message as well as condemn him for it. Baptism should be the same for us. Matthew uses the image of the temptations to help us understand that connection between Jesus and us. Now there are certainly many ways to consider how that connection works. One way might be to think of the place where we go in Matthew's Gospel, the desert. And what temptations might say to us. The place for Jesus was a real wilderness. Now, I've never, well, I, I can't say I've never seen a desert. Uh, when Judy's dad uh, flew us out to Arizona to one of his um, uh, Army, uh, Air Corps Army reunions, uh, we had a chance to actually go into the desert how dry um, and how hot uh, it was because the heat doesn't just radiate from the sun down but it heats up that sand and if you've ever been to the beach uh, you know how hot that sand can get if you don't put shoes on and if your feet are as tender as mine are uh, it's like ouch, 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 and you just kind of run into the water so you can cool them off and then you run back to your towel or to where you can put your shoes back on to cool your feet down once more. It is a place where people die, drained of every bit of life that is within them. Uh, the heat, the thirst, the physical isolation, it's always a huge understatement for what Matthew writes. When he says, Jesus fasted 40 days and nights, and afterwards he was famished. Famished. It's a miracle he even lived for that long through that process without food and drink. He should have been dead. So we begin to see this place as not only a physical place, for Jesus, but a place that Jesus went to pray, but also a place for us to look deep within ourselves through the process as we come face to face with God, our God and our humanness. Now we must remember that we're not supposed to figure out how Jesus lasted for 40 days and nights in the desert. That's not what's important here. We're supposed to come to a better understanding of the ministry and of the mission of Jesus in relationship to the whole story of salvation. And that's where the temptations come in. Again, this isn't a story where we're supposed to focus on what the devil may have looked like or what it may have been like for Jesus to be on that pinnacle of the temple. And you often wonder when you do get to that, didn't anyone ever see Jesus up there when the devil took him there? But that's not the point of the passage in the first place. It's about relationship. It's about connection. Matthew's point in describing the temptations was to connect Jesus to the ongoing story of salvation that was begun in the Old Testament. We see this connection in Jesus as he replies to the devil's temptation. Jesus first quotes Deuteronomy, one does not live by bread alone. Jesus, identifying with his humanity, instead of relying on his divine power to change stones into bread, 
His ministry is to the people of God, the children of God. And he accomplishes that by sharing our humanity. In other words, in other temptations, Jesus continues to model how we humans should behave. Again, Jesus quotes Deuteronomy when he points out that God is worthy. Only God is worthy of mankind's worship. God alone is the sovereign Lord. God expects humanity's service. This homage is actually not even the devil's in the first place to offer or to be respected. We're reminded of the, of the conversation between the devil and God that took place in the book of Job. The devil tries to tempt God by assuming an equality that doesn't exist and doesn't belong to him in the first place. And then the last temptation shows Jesus' faithfulness, his discipleship. He again quotes from Deuteronomy, pointing out that one shall not tempt the Lord as Quite frankly, the Jews had often done many times before. This reminds the readers of Matthew's Gospel that the faithful Jew is faithful to God and to God's commands. A faithful Jew knows that God is the sovereign Lord and is worthy of homage and service and praise. A faithful Jew keeps the commandments and models for all what it is to be, what it is written in the Torah to follow. So this place that is before us, this desert, whether a physical place or that place deep within where Jesus understood his connection to God and also to humanity is a holy place. We learn from examining this place in Jesus' life because we can connect to that place in our own lives where we struggle with our relationship to God and to other human beings. We can be supported in that struggle by this account it helps us to put things in order. It helps us re to remember that when we might be tempted to put something in our lives before faithfulness to God's soul, we can remember that God is God and that God is our help and our salvation. You see, God resides in all of the places of our, of our lives. And in all of those places, God makes them holy. My friends, may we experience a holy Lent, not only through this Lenten season, but throughout the year that lies ahead. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we do come to you troubled through what life throws at us, presents to us. But Lord, as we have seen, we are to rise above those experiences and to remain faithful to you to rise above and to let that connection show that exists not only between us and each other, but between us and you. We ask forgiveness for our own failures, but Lord, we also ask forgiveness for those that would falsely accuse others in this process. As we face the days that lies ahead, 
Lord, soften the hearts. Speak to those that are in authority, that are abusing that authority. Help them to see what they are doing and how they are doing it. It seems to be contrary to our faith, to the love that we are to share, to the life that we are to live out for one another. And Lord, soften our response because we must be honest. When we are struck, we want to strike back. But Lord, temper us that we may be the children that you have called us to be. That we may witness to our relationship with you and with one another. That we may be faithful to your word and faithful to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who came to bring salvation to all, to all of our world. May we never forget that. And may we acknowledge the differences that we have with one another. But may we work through them and beyond them to be your children. Claim us for this community. And use us to witness as only you can. Lord, we ask for your healing hand and healing presence will be to be with our sick, with those that are on our list and those who are not, those that we mention in our hearts even now. Come to each one, Lord. Bring them your spirit. Bring them your healing hand. And touch them each according to their needs. Not their desires, but their needs. We thank you for being with those who have lost loved ones. And reassuring them of the power of the, of the presence of the resurrection. But Lord, there are still those that are between life and death. And they need your presence to be shown and acknowledged through their daily routine. Speak to them and uplift them and use us to show them your care and your love for all. We give you thanks and praise for your healing hand that is active and is at work in touching our sick, in touching those of mind, body, and spirit that are troubled. And Lord, we just ask that you may fill us with that spirit that will bring reassurance and peace and love and gentleness, all of the characteristics that you ask for us to give to one another. May we show them in all that we say and in all that we do. Bring wisdom to our leaders and to judges that are going to be trying to decipher aspects of the way that we live within the denomination and outside of it. Pray for those in Ukraine that are still trying to maintain their freedom and their way of life through an aggressor that is relentless. Lord, be at work and help us to see what we can do to bring peace and love, mercy and grace to all. Help us and strengthen us through this, this season of Lent that we will come out closer to you and closer to one another. 
We ask these things in Christ's name, who call us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. prayer over the offering. And now, Lord, accept the offerings that we have brought in. Upon entering or upon departing, may they be used for the glory of your word. May they be used not only within this community, but within your world, within your creation. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. Please stand as you are able, for Lord, dismiss us with thy blessing. And now may the grace and the love of God surround you and hold you. May as we become tempted this week, this day, may we recall the temptations of Christ and his humanness in withstanding them. He didn't use his divine nature, but used his human qualities to say no. May we follow him in our life now and forever. May his blessings be upon you now and forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.